Welcome, everybody. Today, uh, we're talking with Roscoe Callis of General Protocols. I'm George Donnelly. Uh, Roscoe, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well. Thanks, uh, George. How are you? Uh, doing well. Doing well. Get, get, just getting over a, a small cold. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So, um, so you work for General Protocols, which is a, a company in the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. Tell, tell us what General Protocols does. All right. So basically, um, General Protocols uh, is currently building DeFi for Bitcoin Cash. Basically, it's kind of the the first company to really attempt uh, a, a, a kind of DeFi platform for Bitcoin Cash. Um, so we're currently working on the this platform called any hedge which basically allows two parties to enter into an agreement where one side wants to keep their money stable in terms of us dollars or some other asset and the other party wants to um leverage their 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 money so they want to get more of the volatility that bitcoin cash has Okay, so for example, one way that this system could be used is um, say that uh, I have some Bitcoin Cash and maybe you know I'm concerned about uh, the price falling, so I want to I want to get a little stability. You know, maybe my appetite for risk is kind of low right now for some reason, and so then I can make an offer, right? But how does it how does it work from that point? You know, from the user perspective. So. Um... The protocol is kind of agnostic on how these two uh, people come together. Um, but um, we're currently working on the integration within the new upcoming D token uh, exchange, which is a non custodial exchange, um, will be for SLP tokens. And they will also offer um, an, an easy to use interface to these AnyHedge smart contracts. So uh and and in that case um there will be a, a market maker where users can always um get into a contract with the market maker on either side mm -hmm. oh, okay so that's it's going to launch in that more simplified uh way so yeah so, exactly so how will it look from my point of view will i basically end up with the equivalent of a stable coin or or how, how's is it going to be is the product of that going to be spendable too, or, or how so, is that going to work? Um, currently, it's not possible to sort of um, spend that contract or like to uh, to exchange the, the the ownership of that contract to someone else. Um, that's definitely something that could be done in in the future, making it like you said a bit more like a stable coin where you, you, you'd be able to just transfer the ownership of the contract to someone else. Um, but right now, um, I wouldn't say it's a stable coin, but it is a, a, a solution for stability, kind of a similar solution as using stable coins. But one of the nice things about that is that you're actually still holding BCH. So the contract is still all denominated in BCH. Um, and the way that works is that both parties put BCH into the contract and just the distribution of the BCH changes. So one party might get more of the BCH depending on the price and the other party will get less. I see. So what's the, you know, let's say that, you know, I have some BCH and I think the price is going to go down. So what's the benefit to the other side of the contract? if right. they if they take that that bet so to speak so um usually the other side will be some sort of speculator that um has a that that, that thinks that the price of bitcoin cash will rise and by going into that co into uh, an any hedge contract on that side they basically get leverage on their assets and the the amount of leverage they get is based on some of the other parameters in the contract. Um, so there's there's a few different things that you can configure. For example, how long the contract will run, say one week, one month, something like that. And the other thing is how much um, 
how, how big of a price drop the contract protects against. So you can, for example, say, uh, as someone who wants stability, I want, uh, I want to be protected against a price drop of 10% uh, or 25%. And if the price drops lower than that, then uh, the contract will automatically liquidate and they will have to open up a new contract, if that makes sense. And so basically based on that, uh, on that price drop protection, let's call it, um, the, the other party gets leverage. So for example, with a price drop of, uh, or a, tr a price drop protection of 25%, the other party gets about three, three times leverage. So if they put in 10 BCH or yeah, let's say 10 BCH and, uh, um, the price rises times two. Okay, I'm bad at these calculations, never mind. But anyway, the, if, if, if the price goes up uh, 10 by 10%, they will get a return of 30% instead. So uh, that, that's what they get out of it. I see. Yeah, it makes sense. So if the price goes up, then I get essentially my, my fiat value, right? But that means that my net BCH amount goes down. Yeah. Like that, I don't yeah, benefit it, from the price appreciation, but the other yeah. side would benefit. Yeah, exactly. So the other side benefits more than usually from the, from the, from the price appreciation, but they also suffer more than usual from the, like if the price drops. Mm -hmm. So if the price drops, I would actually get more, more BCH. Um, yes, yes. Exactly. If you're the if you're the the hedging party, so the the, the one that wants stability, then uh, yeah, you get more BCH out of it. Cool. So, what part of the system are are you working on, and what, what's your role on the general protocols team? So, uh, I was initially brought on in May, and um, I mainly my 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 main role is. Uh, in the the smart contract development and the surrounding tooling, so the the SDK kind of things. Um, so uh, currently, both the smart contract and the tooling are in a pretty good place. So I'm also branching out to uh, to the um, the other aspects of the product, um, but mainly those two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And um, so the smart, is this uh, written in like cash script? Is that what it's called? Yeah, exactly. So um, I guess that's also why I was brought on in May, because I also developed the smart contract language cash script, mm -hmm. um, which means that I know my way around it pretty well. Um, <laughs> so um yeah, so so basically that high level language cash script allows you to or it, it, it makes smart contract development for Bitcoin Cash a lot more accessible and a lot more understandable as well if you're reading the source code of the smart contract. Um, um yeah, so so a lot a lot of these things that we're doing would be pretty difficult to write, like not not impossible, uh, of course, but very difficult to write. Um, just by writing the, the 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 low level underlying Bitcoin script, um, so yeah, Cash Script's been a a big help there. Mm -hmm. And so, as part of the hackathon in August, I think you didn't you create or weren't you part of a team that created a tool that makes it easier to create Cash Script uh, code? Right. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's correct. Yeah. So uh, it was for the BCH DevCon which was organized uh, by Eleanor Blanc and uh, I think Christian from uh, Bitcoin Cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so the product, I, the project that I came up with together with um, uh, Jenny, my team member, um, was so-called Cash Script Playground, which basically is an online Cash Script editor, which then also includes the the compilation and then the usage of that contract. So you can, in one in one side of the screen, you can write the contract, and then on the other side of the screen, you can uh, actually use the contract immediately. So mm -hmm. that, that that should make it easier for people to play around um, with the language without having to install anything. 
Cool. And where can people find it? Is it online today? Yes. Um, so the the main CashScript documentation and and all that lives on CashScript.org, mm -hmm. and then for the playground, it's playground.cashscript.org. Okay. Cool. So, what could can you tell us a little bit about what we can do with CashScript? You know, what kind of smart contracts can we create on Bitcoin Cash? And how how is it different from what you know people um, may be able to do on, for example, Ethereum? Yeah. So um, for the more technical people uh, out there, I I actually wrote a, a pretty good article about the differences between Ethereum and also BTC and then BCH. Um, maybe we can put the link there. It's it's on my website kalis.me. And um, I guess that one of the big differences is that um, smart contracts on Ethereum have a state, so they, they can store values. So for example, in Ethereum, you have these ERC20 tokens, which are basically smart contracts. And inside that smart contract, they keep track of a list of balances of every user. So they know that uh, you know, George has something like 100 DAI and I have 50 DAI. And then when I send him money, then the smart contract updates its state. Um, so this, this this whole concept of state of storing values doesn't really exist on Bitcoin Cash, on, on Bitcoin Cash smart contracts mm -hmm. or on BTC contracts uh, either. Um, and that's because every... Um, a smart contract on Bitcoin Cash is basically more like a, a safe or a lockbox, and um, in order to spend the money from that lockbox, you have to provide certain values, or you have to 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 have certain conditions be true. Um, but there's there's uh, no way to keep keep track of any state or anything. So I'm 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 not sure that 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 doesn't sound maybe too limiting but that's actually a, a big part of why um bitcoin cash smart contracts are uh functionally a lot more limited than what eth smart contracts can do mm -hmm. but there are still uh there's still a, lo a lot of interesting things that you can do um for example with this any hedge uh, type of contract that's just all um on-chain bitcoin cash uh smart contract so there's uh that's just all, all um, from the functionality of, of, of Bitcoin Cash. And I would say that it, it's pretty close to what, what ETH DeFi uh, is, like in, in terms of functionality, where you can uh, just peer-to-peer, -peer, you can do something like one party can have this stability and the other party can get leverage on their Bitcoin Cash, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's other interesting things that you can do. Like, for example, Tobias Ruck um, has these smart cards. Um, I'm sure you guys have, have seen about have seen that as well. Sure. And um, so so uh, that kind of thing is possible using the, the smart contract functionality on Bitcoin Cash. And um, Carol Chechkovsky has some interesting smart contracts as well, such as this um, last will which is basically like a dead man switch or also uh, Mecenas, which is a decentralized pet, uh, Patreon. Um, so there's definitely some interesting things that you can do, but there's also a lot of things that you cannot do. And it's not always easy to see where the line is. So that's kind of what we're figuring out as well at general protocols, like trying to push those boundaries. Cool. So it's like a lockbox. So does that mean that basically um, you need a, a private key to, to unlock it? Or is are there more, um, you know, can you unlock it based on the balance of, of other UTXOs? Or, you know, how much, like how much of the, of the contracts are on-chain and how much is, is, has to be manip manipulated off-chain? Right. Um... So yeah, I, I, I guess um, you could see it that every regular um, Bitcoin Cash address or every re regular UTXO that uses the 
pay to pop key hash um, pattern is actually also a smart contract. And it's also one of those lock boxes. And I guess the most simple one where, like you said, um, you provide a signature uh, to unlock this, this lock box and spend the funds. Um, but that's the most basic one. And um, there's, there's for, for, for all these other uh, kind of more complex smart contracts, you need a lot more parameters or a lot more conditions um, to spend it. So for example, the any hedge contract, um, among other things, uses a price oracle, which is a, a, a sort of third party, which signs messages, basically attesting to a, a, a price at a, at, a, at a certain block. So they are just signing messages saying, okay, well, at block uh, 100, the price of BCH is $200. And then um, the smart contract is able to, or, or we, we can provide that message to the smart contract. And then the smart contract can verify that it's coming from that third party. So it, it's kind of like uh, a trusted third party, but they don't really have, um, uh, they, they, they they can steal the funds that are inside the contract, but they do influence it by by publishing certain price messages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so that, that that's just an example of um, the more complex parameters that you need to provide, uh, such as the price message and the signature of the oracle, um, in order to spend these more complex contracts. I see. So how do you ensure the reliability of the Oracle? So it's just a single source Oracle, right? It's not like it's crowdsourced or anything. So how, like, how do you ensure that, for example, that, you know, maybe the, there's an outlier result, you know, maybe the price is 300 and then the outlier shows it as 250 and maybe that's not re really representative of the market. Cause right. I, it feels like the whole, the whole need to trust that Oracle, the, the third party yeah. seems like a, a big deal. There's definitely, uh, an amount of trust involved with, with the Oracle. Um, so one of the safety features against that is that everything that the Oracle does is public. So if they do something that is not like, like, like the expected behavior, then everyone can see that and they will stop trusting that Oracle. Um, the other thing is that um, um, one second. So yeah, so so the other thing is that you really have to make sure that if you're running the Oracle that you're uh, that, that you're really aggregating prices. So you're 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 you need to be um, kind of resistant to spikes. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we've, we've seen plenty of sort of flash crashes on some of these centralized exchanges where the price just bounced to something like $100 and then back up immediately, like 10 times that amount. So um, ideally, the Oracle would um, get from multiple sources and do its own kind of aggregation before publishing a message of that source and maybe even filter some outliers. And then something else that would be possible is for the contract to use multiple oracles, multiple sources. So you would maybe say that, um, you know, I want these three uh, oracles and I'm going to take inside this smart contract, I'm going to take the average of those three oracles or maybe something uh, like remove the highest and the lowest and take the, the middle one, something something in that, um, yeah, so, so something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that, that there's different things that, that the Oracle can do, and there's different things that the smart contract creators can do. But um, that's kind of the, the most important parts. I see. That's pretty neat. So besides uh, DToken, the forthcoming um, non-custodial exchange, and the ability to kind of hedge or, or you know, long or short, um, what other applications do you see, you know, say over the next two years for, uh, this, uh, new any hedge technology that you're developing? 
so I guess that um, for any hash specifically, um, I don't think it will be like so. So the, the 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 plan is to integrate that service into other um, in other services. So maybe in, into other exchanges or into uh, maybe wallets or or make some other integrations to make this more accessible to um, to users. Um, but other than that, the main part of any hedge is to offer stability to those who want it and offer leverage and more volatility to other people who want it. Um, and so in the future, general protocols will probably work on different kinds of DeFi uh, uh, projects as well. Um, but in terms of any hedge, uh, I, it's not going to get a lot more complicated than it is. So something that we might add in the future is, uh, like you mentioned before as well, is uh, transferability of these contracts, making mm -hmm. it more like a stable coin. And the other thing could also be what I mentioned before is um, multiple oracles just to make the, the contract more resistant to this sort of trusted third party risk. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so do you foresee smart contracts on Bitcoin Cash, the capabilities expanding or evolving, uh, evolving in, the, in the future? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, in, in the past years, the, the smart contract capabilities have already evolved quite a bit. Um, so there's updates uh, like improved, like the, we, we added some more um, opcodes a few years back and also the check data SIG opcode, which, is, which has been a very important uh, improvement. Um, so I, I definitely foresee that there will be more of those kinds of improvements. One thing that um, general protocols would like to see is um, more support for larger numbers inside these smart contracts. Because um, currently, Bitcoin script, so the, the scripting engine uses 32-bit numbers. And um, what that means is that if you um, if you want to do any um, any math on the balance of the contract, for example, so then then the balance of the contract cannot be higher than 21 BCH. So 21 is kind of the limit for where the um, huh. for, for this kind of math, um, which is which is kind of limiting. Like if, if 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 the if the price of BCH grows, then you know in terms of in terms of dollars, the limits will be like will become better but still 21 bch at current prices um that's just like that, that's just a couple of thousand uh a couple of thousands of year of, of, of dollars um and so any hedge works around that by doing a lot of weird and complex math tricks um mm -hmm. So, so that we can actually uh, go go way up, uh, we, we can make much bigger contracts than than that. Um, but that also that does mean that um, uh, the contracts get way get they they get way more complex, uh, sort of unnecessarily. Like uh, a, a huge part of our of our contracts is just uh, spent on uh, on sort of making workarounds for these uh, limits. And even in the end, there's a slight math error. So um, there will be like some percentage points, not a lot, but something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2%. Um, it, it, it can be 0 0.1 or 0 0.2% off of the actual uh, number, um, which is still, it's, it's, it's not that much, but it's, it, you'd rather have the exact number. Um, so that's that's definitely right. one upgrade that we would want to see. So once it's upgraded to sixty four bit, what what will be the the limit? You know, instead of twenty one BCH. Um, 
I would have to check. I don't I don't know that from the top of my head, but it's it's definitely going to be um, much higher. So for every bit that you add, basically the number goes times two. Mm, um, okay. Mm -hmm. So so that's it's, a very big number. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be much much bigger. Um, but for example, if you look at SLP uh, tokens, then uh, this number has to represent maybe a, a number of decimals. For example, if you look at the spice token, um, it, the, the, the number that's used inside the spice token uh, to, to, to represent uh, the number of spice tokens is uh, has, has 18 decimals, I think. So hmm. then all of a sudden, um, you need 18 more zeros to represent the same number. And so in, in those kinds of cases, even 64 bit might, might not be enough. So when that upgrade happens, um, we definitely need to look into how much higher it needs to be versus what the costs are of making it higher. So, um, that's definitely a trade off, but I think 64 bits is definitely a no brainer and we can go higher. Mm -hmm. Is that, so that change, does that, that doesn't affect consensus, right? It does. It does. Okay. It does. So, right. um, so it, it's, it's going to be a consensus upgrade. Um, and we'll have to see with, with the different node teams and, and different stakeholders in the network to see how we can roll that out best and, and, and make the make the best trade-offs there okay cool so speaking of future improvements uh what do you foresee for bitcoin cash in 2021 and what what do you think bitcoin cash really needs to to thrive and 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 to continue growing and uh you know uh increase the market cap increase the user base get more excitement going what right. do we need so i think Definitely one of the things, one of the, the, the fields is these kinds of smart contracts. So if more people, if, or if more projects spin up that, that do this kind of DeFi, um, that, that will definitely help, uh, cause we've seen, um, these kinds of projects already be, um, pretty big on other chains like Ethereum. Um, so that's definitely a big thing. I also think um that having better uh or more accessible tools for developers to create applications around bitcoin cash that mm -hmm. will help so i think um uh there's this uh mainnet dot cash project that was funded with a flip starter earlier this year mm -hmm. and they're definitely doing a lot of good work into making that all more accessible towards developers um and, and, and besides that, I think that a lot of it is, is just the, the great hard work of, of people driving adoption, maybe locally at places, uh, but also uh, digitally, just like having people accept Bitcoin Cash more. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, this has been a really interesting uh, interview. Really, I'm really excited to see uh, what any hedge and general protocols are doing in uh, 2021. Do you want to leave us with any final words? To let people know where they can find you. Sure. Yeah. So um, if you want to learn more about any hedge, um, you can go to the any hedge website, any hedge.com. And there will also be a telegram link in there to join our, um, our telegram group and ask any questions that you have. Um, you can also find my personal website at calis.me um, where I write some interesting articles about smart contracts and stuff. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Great, a great uh, conversation. Thank you so much, Roscoe Callis of General Protocols. Um, thanks so much for your time and uh, let's keep building Bitcoin Cash. Awesome. Thanks for having me, George. <laughs>